welcome everybody to this new uh, Excel platform webinar. Uh, I see that uh, we have quite a few attendees with us today. I really uh, appreciate your joining us uh, for this live exploration of the new major release by Excel. So let's uh, let's start. So thanks again for your attendance. I'm Marwan. I will have the pleasure of uh, introducing you to uh, the new major version six of Excel platform. Uh, that we just released. And uh, I'll be walking you through its main uh, features, main improvements and changes. All right, let's get started. Uh, just a quick word on Excel before we start for those who don't know us yet. So Excel is a software editor company uh, founded in 2003. Uh, it was founded in uh, San Francisco. So we have four offices around the, 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 uh, the globe. And uh, in terms of our, our ecosystem, we have have over 100,000 uh, community members in our online community. Uh, today, we lead the Open Source Needs Association, which represents uh, the uh, open source core of Excel platform today. So we're in a situation where digital work tools are no longer nice to have, but a must have for companies and organizations. And we think it's only going to continue to, to be with this way and to um, uh, increasingly be more and more critical to embrace the use of uh, uh, digital workspace uh, solutions. And so we see this, uh, we see it as our mission to offer the world our take on what would be a great solution for providing employees with these tools and or having uh, a nice wrapper or hub for their existing work tools. Uh, and we do this through Excel platform, the digital works, workplace solution platform that uh, Today rests upon these four pillars that you see on my screen and uh, that I think represent well the types of features that uh, we focus on offering uh, natively within uh, the platform today. So in terms of competitive advantages that we uh, that kind of represent our differentiators uh, in the market, we can uh, safely say that the primary thing that we focus on providing is a user-centric experience. So when you work with us today, uh, you can expect to, that we won't be working on building a content portal or a business app portal or an integration project. Instead, we'll be working on a user experience. And of course, these aspects uh, that I mentioned can be part of it, but uh, it's all driven by user experience. So today we'll be, this is the main focus of uh, today's webinar, and I'll be uh, going through the uh, new features and new improvements and changes within this uh, new version release one by one. I'll uh, explain what we added, what we changed, and I'll try to demo uh, these uh, improvements and these new features for you guys. So the first thing that changed is uh, that we have a new portal site, a new default portal site that you'll find in an Excel platform called Digital Workspace which will replace the, the old portal site, which by default is called intranet. So what happens now is when you, as soon as you access that extra platform site, instead of seeing slash portal slash uh, intranet, you will now see slash portal slash DW, uh, digital workplace. So the first thing you probably noticed uh, uh, is the new homepage, right? So um, this new homepage provides uh, a snapshot to the user of the recent uh, publications in terms of announcements, articles, any top-down corporate communications, um, in this case represented by this uh, uh, top uh, banner um, image slider. Also this latest news section, which shows me the latest articles published uh, using the new uh, news feature, which I uh, uh, will be showing you today. It also gives me a uh, sort of a, um, a personalized dashboard that uh, will summarize my activity. So I see welcome message here, for example, welcome back, John. Here I can click on uh, my weekly points, for example, uh, the number of points, uh, activity points I accumulated uh, thanks to the gamification system, which uh, attributes points to users based on their activity within, uh, within the site. And I can see in which domains uh, I'm most active. As John, my weekly ranking in terms of the uh, my activity level. So we rank the users also thanks to the gamification system uh, within sort of a leaderboard. And I can glance at my current ranking uh, right now. As John, I'm the most active 
person in the site, so no, number one, um, this week at least. So um, other than that, if I keep scrolling, we see this little dashboard. Uh, we see popular spaces, interesting spaces, uh, active spaces within the, uh, the platform that are open that uh, might be interested in joining, for example. I see uh, uh, an area where I would see any ongoing uh, current tasks assigned to me as John. I see documents, so uh, documents I am currently working on. I see documents I have bookmarked, my favorites, uh, documents shared with me, um, and I can explore interesting documents that people, other people are working on. So just a widget uh, for glancing at document-related activity. So the next change that uh, we can take a look at uh, is uh, the new site navigation menu. So um, here, uh, if I need to access the navigation of the site, uh, I just click here, and this is where we see the navigation menu. So in the navigation menu, we see, uh, of course, the links to the main pages of my site, uh, like in the, new, in the old navigation. So here we have the snapshot page or homepage, and then we have the stream. So uh, if I click on stream, here we see uh, the social activity stream that you guys probably know uh, that used to be by default on the homepage. So uh, it's a Facebook-like or LinkedIn-like stream that aggregates activity uh, in different spaces, in different areas, uh, activity of people I'm following, uh, things like that. So, uh, and I can interact with these activities with uh, comments, uh, with likes, and also with kudos. Uh, this is a new feature that allows us to uh, thank or recognize people uh, within uh, the organization. So now we have split the two and we have two pages, home page and stream page. We moved the user settings menu to the site menu. So we want the idea is that we want to have one menu that centralizes everything. Uh, so as Mary, if I need to access my profile page, I deal with one menu. I come here and I click here. If I need to browse the site, I come here and I browse the site. If I need to access the space, I come here. I see the spaces here. I see the I can access the uh, exhaustive list of spaces, I can filter spaces from the submenu. If I need to go to my settings as a Mary, as a regular user, I go to settings. And this is where I can change uh, language, time zone, notification settings. We have the three notification channels, email, mobile push notifications, and on site. And I can go to manage notifications to change the way I'm notified about specific things, right? It's user centric. And people are different and their preferences are different. The next thing I wanted to show you today uh, is the new space navigation. If I go to, for example, to the human resources space, we, the space navigation, which is a top bar, is no longer its own menu. It now It's now integrated within the, the platform top bar. So we try to leverage screen space better. Instead of having a top bar and under it another menu, another top bar, we now have one one top bar that adapts to the page that you are seeing. So now I know I'm in the human resources and this is my navigation and I can navigate the, the space from there. So let's move on. Uh, next feature is going to be uh, the news feature. And I'm really excited to show this one. Uh, a news module for, um, for administrators, for communications professionals, like internal comms people. Uh, that will allow them to easily uh, push corporate communications, top-down communications to their teams, to specific audiences, or to everybody in the company, depending on their uh, their permission level within the platform, in an easy way, without the need to be trained on a particular CMS. So as you know, uh, when I come here to the activity stream of, uh, of MySpace, uh, we have the activity composer here that allows me to write a post write a short message in the activity stream of MySpace. That's still there. When I click on post in company news, we have this new activity composer that looks nicer and is more cleaner and more user-friendly. That allows me when I need to write a full-fledged news article and then pin it somewhere and display it on the homepage within a dedicated news feed so everybody can see it, uh, display it as a, an image carousel or display it as sort of a news stream or something like that. Well, this is now possible, uh, so you have to come here. I'm going to click there, and this will display the news editor. 
a straightforward, uh, no-nonsense uh, content editor that allows you to uh, write and format your article. It will ask you for to provide four things, an illustration image, a title, a summary, and your article's body. So let's start with a quick image here. Let's uh, add a quick announcement about, um, about Exo Platform, new release, for example. Uh, discover the new uh, Exo Platform 6 release. Okay, so the title and then a summary. So my summary here. And then when people click on the article, they will read the full article. So we need to provide uh, the article here. Okay. In the article itself, we can, of course, format our text. We can insert quotes. We can uh, insert bullet points. We can insert links. We can insert images. So if I click on insert image from here, it will ask me to drag and drop my, an image or upload from my computer or select from existing uploads like browse Excel platform for, uh, for documents like this, or uh, we can provide the URL. So let's try to insert, for example, a YouTube video. That's also a possibility. Um, so one thing you can do is insert um, an online hosted video, like a YouTube Vimeo or daily motion video, uh, which will allow you to embed the video within your post um, and make it playable from within your article. I'll insert a YouTube video, and uh, there you go. It's embedded within my post. Uh, you can also attach files if you click here. It gives you all the options to upload manually, drag and drop. Maybe I've got an MP4 video that I want to upload and include. So I'll just get a, a document or video like this MP4, or maybe a PDF as well, like this. So, so now we attach a couple of files there. It's saving drafts as I edit my article automatically. So we see drafts here and I can resume work on a, on a draft. And finally, if I'm happy with it, I can post it. But you notice something, one more thing. Uh, you notice this little button that says pin article. When you click there and then you post, it's going to show this confirmation message. This article will be pinned on the snapshot page, on the home page and made visible to everyone. Can, do you confirm this action? Well, here I'm going to pin this and I'm going to publish it. So now the article is published by John. Uh, you can see the summary, you can see the article itself, the video we inserted. At the bottom, we see the file attachments. And as always, interaction and bottom-up communication is important. So we see the liking, the comments, and the kudos. So if I switch over to my other user, Mary. So as soon as she uh, accesses the, uh, the site, he will see the article pin here. It says discover under the uh, latest news section, we see discover the new exit back from release. When I click on it, I see the uh, John's article. I can uh, read it and I can uh, like it. And of course I can uh, react by commenting or kudos. Uh, congrats to the EXO team for this release, et cetera. So there you go. I left a comment uh, and a kudos. So if I go back to the homepage as Mary, um, and I click on see all in the latest news section, this will take me to a dedicated page that we have, it's called Newsfeed, and it centralizes all news articles published in different areas from different spaces. So we see John, for example, he published the, uh, the Excel Platform 6 uh, article. We see it here. We see the date and time, the location, which space uh, it was posted from. And we see the views, the number of uh, views it got so far. And of course, I can click on it to read it. Uh, I can filter this list. I can see, uh, I can look for specific news, for example, like this. Or I can filter by source. Or or type of news. So show me only HR news or HR and company news. So now we will talk about the new App Center feature in version six. So the App Center is a new menu and area. The way you access this menu is just go to Excel platform. On any page, you will see it on the top bar. You'll see this new icon. 
when you click there, you will see this nice My Applications menu. In this menu, we can display links to applications. These applications can be built-in Excel platform applications, such as the Task Manager or the News, or external business applications that you use. So uh, you can, from this menu, you can access the all applications, which will take you to the App Center. And this is the exhaustive list of all apps that you can explore, search, and mark as favorites. Maybe I use the uh, agenda app of Excel platform a lot, and I want to uh, add it to my favorites. I want to bookmark it essentially, so I click here, and it's added to my favorites as John. So now, uh, anytime I need to open the agenda, I go here and I open the agenda. If I need to search for an app, and this is another improvement that we did in version 6, uh, we redesigned the search engine. It looks better, it's easier to use, it's, it's more, it's, it's faster. So in my experience, it's way faster than it used to be in finding uh, information. So if I click here and I need to find um, Outlook, it shows me results. So it's looking in different areas and uh, Activities and by the way, we now we now index the activity stream, so we can look inside discussions and posts on the activity stream, starting from version six, which is really cool because you no longer lose information that people might might share in comments uh, when discussing there. Uh, I can look for applications, I can look for files, notes, people, uh, products. This is uh, another another feature, spaces, tasks and uh, anything we uh, integrated to the XO search engine. Um, and it's it's uh, way faster because it, it's now displaying, it's, uh, as soon as it finds results in one of these areas, it displays them. It doesn't wait for other results to be found in the other sections. So um, it's uh, the performance has been improved and the display as well, I think. Okay, so if I go to my profile page, as uh, maybe uh, John, by clicking here, we can see that the profile page looks a bit uh, nicer and cleaner. Um, and we can still change our picture, our cover photo of my uh, profile page. We can change um, the About Me section individually, so I can share some information here. Notice the use of drawers. Everything is a drawer. The admin, the edit menu is a drawer. The notification menu is a drawer. The app menu is a drawer. The chat is a nice drawer for the discussions. The message composers are drawers. So we, we're now really unifying our UI vocabulary to make it easier for users to kind of understand this new vocabulary and get used to, uh, to it. Um, and to focus their attention on what they're doing. So uh, in the profile page, we see also the quotas I received or sent per week. Uh, we see the experience section. It's a nice timeline with my latest experiences and I can add work experiences with skills and job and start dates and so on. The contact area has been improved. We have added new fields um, such as the uh, location, the department, the team, the profession, the country, the city. So this is what we did in terms of people page. Now let's talk about the people directory, which has been redesigned as well. Let's go there. And the people directory is where you can find people and you can filter them by position, by job position, by skills, by name and so on. So now it looks like this and you can see Additional things like uh, my invitations, suggestions of people to connect with, a leaderboard of the most active members per week, per month, for all times. Uh, you can filter by activity domain, like attendance. So right now, Mary comes here often. So in terms of attendance, she's number one. Uh, in terms of social interactions, John is number one. He interacts a lot. In terms of knowledge sharing, in terms of teamwork, or overall, overall, John is uh, currently the most active member. So kind of a leaderboard uh, of members as well. And of course, here you can still filter members, like I said. Same for the space directory. As you noticed, uh, it's also redesigned. 
and it looks better. We added sections to show me, for example, a list of spaces I'm managing. Okay, like show me just the spaces that I'm managing and I'm managing three spaces here. Uh, or show me popular spaces, uh, things like that. So also the wizard that allows you to create the space that has been improved um, and made, uh, made simpler. I'll show you one use case. Uh, um, I'm part of the human resources team. And maybe the human resources team uses Google Drive, okay? Or Microsoft OneDrive. And that's just what they use. And um, they've created a project for managing the website. And they invited people from other departments. But now, all of a sudden, I need to share files from the Google Drive, uh, my Google Drive, to um, this, this project team, okay? which includes people that don't use Google Drive. So what do I do? I click on Add File when, when doing a share or when making a post. And I click Select from Drive. And here, we can see my personal drives in Excel platform. We can see space drives in Excel platform. And we see this button that allows me to connect OneDrive or Google Drive. OK, so if I want to connect OneDrive, for example, it will just ask me to authenticate uh, one time, and it will remember me. So it will keep my drive there once I add it. So I don't have to do that every time. And once I connect my drive, I can explore, uh, find the file I want to share, select it, and share it within, uh, within the post. Very, uh, very useful for collaboration. Okay, so if you want to change the branding for site in Excel Platform 6, you can change the logo, but also uh, we made it possible to change your corporate colors easily without, uh, without code, without CSS. So you can come here and change the primary color secondary color of the site and the third color uh, to your corporate colors, okay? So you need to be an admin to do this, of course. Now, there are more things that I haven't shown, uh, things around uh, design and user experience improvements, uh, things around bug fixes, uh, cumulative bug fixes, uh, improvements in performance and security of the, of the platform. Um, and if you want to learn more about this conversion and how to obtain it, just uh, if, you're, if you're already a client, just reach out to your uh, uh, XO client trap to discuss uh, what this migration might entail, um, if to obtain technical information like that, change law, things like that. Or if you need a dedicated demo, we'll be happy to, to do one for you uh, on this new version 6 uh, release. Yeah, so I think that's it. No more questions. Um, Really appreciate your time and your interest, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for um, attending this this webinar. Um, please look forward to uh, upcoming uh, announcements about uh, about Excel Platform. We have uh, quite a few things that uh, we're working on, uh, as you saw. Let me just uh, wish you uh, a great afternoon or a great uh, a day, depending on where you are, and uh, hope to uh, talk to you again very soon. Thanks, everybody.